no earnings call lab. We're getting a chance to walk through how to listen to an earnings call. As we get going today, there's a few tools or technologies we were going to be using. We want to make sure those are up and ready to go. The first one is the polling. We'll be using polling throughout our discussion today, so I'll make sure you're comfortable using that. I've got a quick poll as we get going that just kind of asks, are you a graduate of one of our building business acumen programs here at acumen learning? We've been in business for about 19 years. We focus purely on the topic of business and financial acumen. Uh, and so I'm interested to know how many of you are graduates of one of our programs. Yes, I attended the program this year. Uh, yes, I attended it in 2020 or prior to that, or, you know what, Brent, I've never had a chance to go through a, a building business acumen program. Now, as you go ahead and, uh, fill out or, or complete the polling, make sure you hit submit. Uh, it won't calculate it unless you hit submit. So uh, once you make that selection, go ahead and hit submit and it'll pull it in for me. But we're looking forward to jumping in and, and, and talking about how to listen to these earnings calls. Uh, what a great time to be thinking about earnings calls. Uh, and at this point, I think somebody earlier, Jeff, kind of commented, uh, looking at Raytheon Technologies with all the changes in the world and pulling out of Afghanistan, et cetera. So let me go ahead and share those results here. It looks like, um, Boy, the majority of you, about half an, uh, yeah, about the majority of you have uh, participated in one of our programs. So welcome back. It's good to have you. This is a great additional learning to the Building Business Acumen program, a chance to continue practice using the skills, the tools, and the resources as you go and look at your company, your customer's company, or any companies you might be interested in. Well, um, the next question I have around a poll is, uh, is this the first time you've attended this earnings call lab? Uh, we want to get a feel for how many are new versus how many have come back uh, for these. We do these once a month. Uh, every month we'll do a different industry, a different uh, focus area, but that we're really covering how to listen to the earnings call and providing tools to help you to do that. So interested to know uh, how many of you, if this is your first time attending what the CEO needs you to know earnings call lab. Looks like many of you have uh, uh, answered already. I'll go ahead and start to close that up here. But uh, these are great chances to continue to practice using these skills. And if you haven't ever been through a program, no worries, because this is a great chance to build that capability, being able to understand how to listen to these earnings call. How do I kind of take a strategic focus on what they're talking about, as well as how can I understand the basic financial metrics and measures? And then uh, what can I do about it? How can I use it in my life, whether it's personally for my own personal investments, or as I'm looking at my own company, how I can look at uh, uh, what I can do to impact the success of the business, et cetera. Uh, or if you're looking at a customer you might be selling into or working with, understanding them better. Well, it looks like, uh, Boy, about 28% of you, this is your first time. So welcome to those that have come back. Thank you for coming back. Hopefully you continue to find these to be helpful as we move forward. Well, that's the polling tool. We'll be using that throughout today. Want to make sure you're comfortable using that. Let me go ahead and shift gears and let's make sure you got your chat box open. The chat box will be the resource of how we communicate uh, throughout our uh, discussion. Now I've got myself and my team on board to try and help answer questions. Uh, but let's make sure everybody can use that. First of all, open it up. Uh, and you'll notice at the top, uh, the top of the chat box section, it'll say send to. Make sure it says to everyone. And then let's just put in there, where are you calling in from? Uh, we're calling in from Salt Lake City, Utah. So go ahead and put in where you're calling in from. I want to make sure everybody's comfortable using that as we get going today. Actually, we're a little south of that. We're in a place called Orem, Utah. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Utah. Oh, we're right at the base of Mount Timpanogos, uh, just a little bit south of, of that. Uh, great location. If you ever heard of Sundance uh, Film Festival, Sundance Ski Resort is on Mount Timpanogos. Uh, in addition to that, our claim to fame is we had we just finished the Olympics and uh, we had a chance to host the 2002 Winter Olympics. So, uh, anyways, looks like we're comfortable using that. Let's see where we got people kind of all over the United States. Any international people with us today? If so, maybe it's evening. Maybe it's. Uh, Looks like mostly uh, stateside, so welcome, welcome. Well, folks, that's enough about tools. Let's go ahead and jump into our discussion today. We're, we're talking about earnings calls, how to think about them, how to execute around them, how to use them in your daily life. So here's my question, a, a poll question. When's the last time you listened to an earnings call? Could be your own company's call, uh, earnings call, could be a, a competitor, could be a customer, or maybe just some company you're interested in. When's the last time you had a chance to listen to an earnings call? Now, some of you might have that E there. I'd rather be listening. I'd rather go to the dentist than listen to earnings call. Some of you may say, boy, Brent, I'm, 
this is pretty new to me. So I'm excited to kind of learn more about uh, this. So when's the last time you've had a chance to listen to an earnings call is the question. These earnings calls come out every quarter for publicly traded companies. Now, they're not required to do an earnings call. They are required to submit financial information to the Security Exchange Commission. But most companies will take that opportunity to communicate to analysts, to the market, their vision of what happened, as well as where they see the company going. So it's a great resource to understand your company, if they're publicly traded, to understand your competitors, uh, to understand uh, those uh, companies you may sell into or partner with. Uh, as well as it's a great way to understand those companies that you're investing in. So this is a great, I, I kind of call it a hidden gem, something that's available, but a lot of people don't execute or don't connect with them. So it looks like as a group, uh, this year, last year, we've got the majority of you done it this year, some of you last year. It's been a while, and uh, it's a very small percentage of you. You never have uh, participated. Well, excellent. Uh, I hope that's the goal. As we get going today, the goal is not just to come and say, hey, that was kind of interesting, Brent. It's to be able to take the information, the tool that I'm going to give you, and use this in your career. I, my guarantee is as you do this, it really will set you apart within your role uh, with whatever organization you're working in. As you look at these earnings calls, as I said, they happen every quarter. Here's some kind of daunting statistics as you think about this. 95% of employees don't understand their company strategy. This was done, some research that came out from Harvard Business Review and a couple other locations. But, but as you think about that, that's pretty uh, um, uh, interesting statistic and actually a little bit concerning, right? If truly 95% of employees don't understand company strategy, how are we getting good execution? How are we able to execute on the strategy the executives are trying to make? Now, you might say to me, Brent, that's way high for our company. Everybody's really connected. We understand what we're focused on, et cetera. Well, let's look at the, this statistic. About 90% of employees don't understand companies' important business or financial metrics. That's even with these earnings calls that are available. That's why I call them a hidden gem, a resource that's available that as you get more comfortable listening to these calls, get more comfortable kind of capturing the strategic focus, and then be able to say, what can I do about it? How can I impact it, whether it be uh, internally in my own company, whether it be with a partnership, a customer, a competitor, or just if I'm interested in those that I'm investing, how can I use this information in the activities of my life? That's what we're trying to do. Now, you imagine that with those statistics. Here's the CEO, Mr. Greg Hayes uh, from uh, Raytheon Technologies. Uh, you're the CEO of Raytheon. This is a company, that their foundational companies were built in the early 1900s, been around for a long time, big player, over 181,000 em employees globally. They just did a, a, a major um, uh, merger that happened earlier the, uh, last year, it was about April of last year. They, they it was a merger of equals. United Technologies and Raytheon came together. Not only that, but United Technologies, two years earlier in 2018, they acquired Rockwell Collins. And we're talking a significant player in the aerospace, defense, uh, you're the CEO. And 95% of your employees don't understand your, uh, your strategy or whatever that percentage is. 90% uh, don't understand the key metrics. How do you get clear about each of these segments, their key segments of their business? How do you make sure that they're executing on your strategy and really accomplishing the goal? It, it's a challenge. In some cases, it may feel like you're herding cats as you think about 181,000 employees. How do you get them all on the same page? Well, that's what this is all about. And one of the reasons uh, they have these earnings calls, because you think about it, what does the CEO really want their employees to know? Well, obviously, wants them to understand the strategy, understand kind of key metrics and how they can impact it. Well, what do they want the customers to know? What is it that the CEO needs their shareholders to know, as well as partners that they're working at? These earnings calls provide all that data, the information that will help an employee, help partners, help customers to really align with what the company's trying to do and where they're headed into the future. Well, that's what we want to try and do is provide some resources, tools, et cetera, that can help you get better at listening to these calls. So here's my guarantee. I'm going to give you three things. I'm going to give you basically a, a simple framework that will help you to think about business, talk about business, or execute around business. With that framework, then I'm going to give you two tools. One's a strategy tool. It's called the executive alignment tool. With this tool and any executive communication, could be a press release, could be an earnings call, could be just on their website, what they're talking about strategically, et cetera, annual reports. And you'll be able to assess the strategic focus of the business. 
The second tool I'm going to give you is called the Navigate in the Financial Tool. With this tool, you'll be able to assess the financial performance. Now, don't worry. You don't have to have gone through one of our programs to be able to understand these metrics. There's this great website. You may have heard of it. It's called Google. Uh, once you do the calculations, you can do a quick connect about what these key metrics are, why they're important, how you can impact them. Of course, if you have interest, we'd love to work with you, and we can walk you through how to assess and understand those key metrics you measure. But here's my guarantee. If you take this tool and you use it, two to three times the next two to three quarters at whatever company you're looking at you will get this you will set yourself apart we work with we do about 100 sessions a year we work with many of the fortune 500 about 30 of the fortune 50 we've had a great chance to work with and those employees that truly take these tools and use them two to three times consecutive they'll get it they'll know as much as the investor relationship uh, investor relations leaders do they'll be very connected to what the ceo and the cfo are uh, uh, talking about speaking about You'll get quotes from your colleagues saying, hey, how can you know so much about our business, et cetera? We've seen it over 19 years of experience. People who do this will truly set themselves apart in the organization. So that's my commitment. My guarantee is it'll build your credibility, it'll build your career, as well as it can build your company. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into the tool here. I want to walk you through the process. There's a three-step process I'm going to give you as we get going today. It's very simple. You got to prepare, you got to analyze, you're going to apply. So let's jump into that first stage, which is the prepare phase, and walk you through what I'm talking about there. First of all, as you'll think, if you're new to these uh, earnings calls, these earnings calls happen, as I said, every quarter, and they're broken into kind of two sections. One is the prepared remarks. This is where executives take somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes, and they'll talk about the performance of the company. They talk about how they performed in the quarter. If it's uh, partially through the year, they'll talk year-to-date numbers as well. They'll also talk about kind of the hits as well as the misses and what they're doing to overcome those misses. So they'll start talking about future focus, what's going to happen through the rest of this year, what's our outlook or overview for our industry in the coming months, et cetera. Once they're done with that, you have analysts that are on the call that will open up into a Q&A where they get a chance to clarify as well as confirm what the executives are communicating. Now, this is an interesting part of the call. I love this part because you start to see if the analyst community are buying what the executives are really uh, sharing. They start to clarify or ask, and if they're not really buying into it, I've seen the uh, analysts really push back hard. Well, you're saying this, but your performance suggests this. Can you clarify that for me? Give me a little more color, et cetera. But it's a great way to see if the market's really buying into what they're trying to say. Well, these, uh, so, so that's basics 101 on kind of an earnings call, how to think of them. They last anywhere from about 45 minutes to about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, if you want to just get clarity around the company itself, you can take the first 30 minutes, listen to the prepared remarks, and move on, et cetera. Well, in the prepare phase, what should you do? First of all, you got to locate the call or the transcripts. Let me kind of walk you through how to do that. As I said earlier, that great website we call Google. You come in here and you just type in whatever company you're looking for. Of course, this is Raytheon. Uh, so I want Q2 earnings call. Something like that. You could do investor relations, whatever you might. It's going to come up. Here it is, investor relations, right there. Now, you'll notice there's a lot of different groups. So there's this Motley Fool. Fool. There's the third-party groups that do a little bit of this analysis that will bring the data together, which you may like. But I prefer and I recommend you go directly to the website. So right here, I know RTX. That's their ticker symbol. I know ex immediately where to go. Here's their investor relation page. I want to go there. I click on that. And it's going to take me into what's going on from an investor perspective. Now, I probably could have searched down and would have found Q2 specifically, but most of them will have the latest right here. So here it is. Q2 information for, um, oh, excuse me, that's getting me to the call itself. Let me just go to the second quarter call. And right here, I've got a presentation. I love the presentations. because This is a nice summary of kind of what they communicated to the market. So that's available. I can also access their press release. Now, this is always good because they'll typically do a little summary, but they'll give the financial statements. Now, if you wait a little bit, they'll eventually come out with what's called the 10Q, their security exchange or SEC filings uh, document. But here I can get the financial data real quick. In addition, I can actually download the MP3, put on my uh, Apple iTunes. I literally do that. I know I'm kind of geeked up about this stuff, but I actually listen to it on my Apple iTunes and get a clarity of what's going on for the communication. Very simple to access, a quick Google, Google search for any publicly traded. Some of you might say, well, Brent, what if it's privately held? What do I do? 
Well, uh, I do a same uh, search, look for annual reports, go to their press releases. You can get a lot of data and what they're communicating to the market in their press releases about their strategy, et cetera. Uh, another strategy around a non-publicly traded company is I look at a company that's within the industry that they're competing. So if I have a non-publicly traded company and I look at a competitor that actually is publicly traded, I often will look at their financial information because often the same metrics that publicly traded company is using will be the same metrics that non-publicly traded. So there's a lots of ways to find it. We could talk in more greater detail. If you have more questions, reach out to us. We'll talk about how to do it with a privately held company as well. So that's how you access. You got to access. Now, if it's pre-call, uh, you're going to actually register for the call. And actually, that's what I was doing here. If I go back here, click on this, I register, put my name in, and it sends me a reminder, and I'm ready to go. Once the call's already happened, which we're seeing here that happened on July 27th, I can get the recorded data, recorded information, press release, et cetera, after the fact. So that's what you want to kind of look for as you're going through that. The second step is to review your notes. You might be saying, Brent, what notes? Well, at this point, if this is the first time you've done it, you don't have any notes. But once you complete these workbooks, they become a great uh, data source for you, a great resource to be able to come back and quickly review as you listen to the next call. So they become that review your notes option there. The last thing I recommend uh, on these earnings calls is to do it with others. Now, if you're if you're trying to do your own company, grab a few colleagues and listen to the call together, walk through the tool together. What you find is by doing it together, you get greater insights about what's going on in the company. If it's not, uh, you know, maybe friends that you have an interest in the company you're looking at, but I often recommend pull that, if you're a leader, pull your team together. That's a great way to jump into these earnings calls and make it more meaningful and a greater resource for you. So that's the preparation. You got to get access to the information, review your notes and preparation for the call that's coming up, and then uh, have your team be a part of that discussion. Well, as you jump in the analyze phase, uh, that's the meat of the tool. Uh, jumping into how to analyze, capture the information. Now, if you're listening to these calls, there's a lot of data that's coming at you. And it can be kind of confusing. So what I want to do is give you a simple framework where you can kind of take that information and solidify it to the main points, concepts, et cetera, as you move forward. So the tool that we hear or the resource we have is called the five driver business model. If you work with us or look at our website, read our books, et cetera, you're going to see that these are five fundamental drivers every company focuses on. I don't care if you're a 60 plus billion dollar Raytheon or a small mom and pop organization. These metrics and measures are fundamental for every single company uh, that they uh, that uh, is trying to create some profitability. So as you look at these five drivers, let's go ahead and review them. For those who have never gone through uh, the course, uh, let's do a quick review so you're comfortable how to think about this. Now that means everybody who's been through our program, there was 59% of you been through one of our programs. Let's help kind of do a quick review of that. When you think about cash in a business, there's a common phrase, cash is blank. Put in the chat box, cash is blank. Fill in the Last year, we looked at Boeing, which obviously is a competitor as well as a partner with Raytheon. But you look at Boeing, they had to borrow $42 billion during the downturn. Their 737 MAX had 450 uh, of those airplanes that were on the, on the tarmac. They couldn't deliver them. They were stuck. On top of the fact that airlines pulled back on their capital spend, they were running out of cash. So you saw them driving to get access to more and more cash. So cash is vitally important in a business, but what you find is you don't hear them talk a lot about it unless they're uh, running out. Now, as you think about cash, how can you impact that? Well, for those of you in sales, collecting faster on your contracts, day sales outstanding you may have heard of, other metrics like that. You want to turn your inventory. You want to sell through your inventory as quickly as you can. You don't have a bunch of inventory sitting on your uh, um in your warehouses, it's not helpful. You wanna be able to sell through your inventory or uh, have the right amount of inventory. Of course, payables, you wanna pay slower. And then anything you do to grow your profitability, increase revenue, reduce costs, will all have a positive impact that. Yes, other terms I'm seeing in the chat box, liquidity, cash is liquid. Uh, in fact, when they talk liquidity, most of the time what they're talking about is cash. Uh, oxygen and Thomas said as well, absolutely. Some of the key metrics you'll hear executives talk about around there, you're gonna hear just cash position, cash on hand, 
the accounting terms called cash and cash equivalent. The other one that's really key is called cash flow or cash flow from operations. That represents the difference between all the cash that comes into a business, business minus all the cash that goes out in a business from its core operation in a given period of time. Now, of course, that's something ex executives are looking at, investors are looking at. They want to see that cash number continue to increase month over month, quarter over quarter. Well, that's the cash metric. Uh, we all know what it is. Hopefully that was helpful as a quick review. Let's talk profitability. When we talk profitability in our course, we talked about increasing one thing. How do you impact it? You can increase something or decrease it or a combination of both. Does anybody happen to remember? If you wanna grow your profitability in your business, how do you go about doing that? What are the levers you have? Increase something as well as decrease something. You remember what they are? Okay, increase volume, uh, absolutely. As you think about again, increasing all volume, we're selling more of our product and service, absolutely. Or reduce expenses. So I can increase my revenue or sales, also known as sales, don't get confused on that. So either one of those terms works. How do I increase revenue or sales? Well, as we said, greater volume. I can also do it by increasing my price. So the more unique my product is, more differentiated my product is, I can get a better price. The other is to reduce my expenses or my cost. Cost on a per unit perspective, if you look at the whole organization, it's a reduction of expenses. By, uh, I know that's a new concept for you. Anybody ever heard your executives talk about reducing cost? <laughs> that becomes the lever that you hear more often in business because that scene is controllable. As you can reduce your cost, you're gonna have a significant impact on your bottom line. So that's a big focus area of most companies. So profitability, different terms you can look at, obviously gross profit, operating profit, net profit are some of the more common ones. You'll hear acronyms like EBIT, or EBITDA, extra credit points, by the way, if you know what EBIT stands for, put in the chat box. Those are key profitability metrics your, these companies will look at. So as you're listening to the call, I'm listening for things that talk about better pricing, increased sales volume, or reduction of cost. I look at those things, and that helps me know they're talking about profitability. There you go, Hampton. There you go. Earnings before interest and tax. Excellent. Uh, depreci if you want the DA, you add the depreciation and amortization. Now, this metric right here, impacts everything else increasing revenue or reducing costs has we talked about has an impact right here it will impact all of your asset utilization metrics as well as growth metrics so profitability is the one you hear a lot about the next one we'll talk about of course is assets we talk about what we call asset strength the financial strength of a business you'll hear executives talk about deleveraging their business strengthening their balance sheet etc all that is is they're reducing their debt obligation and increase their financial position so if you want to grow uh, improve your uh, balance sheet you're going to pay down debt and hold on to more cash the problem with that is that's not what your uh, uh, executives, that's not what your investors want you to do. What do they want you to do with your cash? They want you to take it, invest in your business and generate more and more cash. So there's this balancing that goes through what we call asset strength, the strength of my balance sheet, strong financial positions, equity position, uh, current ratios, all that stuff versus deploying those assets and using them to grow great. So this balance, how do we think about that? That's key factors you look at business and you can impact those as well. Of course, growth then is what investors want. There's all metrics. You can grow cash metrics, profitability, asset utilization, but the most common metrics you'll hear executives talk about is growing our top and bottom line. You'll hear that with Raytheon as they talk about their business. And of course, people are the center. What do we mean by people? Both those external customers or buyer user products or services, but also your in internal customers, uh, employees, colleagues. How do we get better from an execution perspective? Well, with that in mind, the foundation of those statements, I'll just erase all my writing here. The foundation are the three financial statements. When people think business and financial acumen, they think financial statements. Now, those are absolutely important. And the tool, the navigating the financial tool I'm going to walk you through, absolutely helps you to understand the financial performance of a company. But in the end, finance is the historical nature of what's going on in the business. In the end, you got to take that information, combine it with your strategy and say, what's the next best thing that we can do? And in particular, what can I do within my role? If I'm part of Raytheon, for example, I'm one of the 181 million, uh, or excuse me, 181 million, 181,000 employees. I'm one of them. How can I impact the success of the business? Well, taking that information, taking the strategy, then having your functional expertise say, what am I going to do differently tomorrow morning? That's what this is all about. 
Well, folks, that's a quick review of the five drivers. Let's go ahead and jump into the tools. The first tool is called the executive alignment. For those that have been with us, this will be a bit of a review for those who are new. It's a simple tool. All you're going to do is take the five drivers, and as you're listening to the call, every time they say something about cash, you put a little slash mark. Every time they say something about profit, you put a little slash mark. By the end of that, you're going to have all sorts of slash marks all over your state, your document here. You can do, come do it over here as well, right? Yeah, you're going to take that information. You're going to answer four, uh, four simple questions over here. Now, don't worry if you're saying, Brent, hey, I'm new to all this. How do I know if they're talking about cash? Well, here's a quick definition of cash. But not only that, I love this little example section. What that does is it says, if you hear these types of things, you know they're talking about cash. So if they're talking about sources or use of cash, so dividends or distribution, that's taking cash, getting money back to investors or partners. Stock buybacks, I'm buying back cash, uh, uh, stock, which is going to take cash. Debt obligation, that's generating cash. So as you, as you look at these, it gives you examples of things you should be listening to. Once you go through that discussion uh, or capturing of which driver they're focused on, here's the questions over here. The questions are quite simply, which business drivers seem to get the most attention and why? Let me get my cursor working here. So which, which driver seems to get the most attention? I love the second part of it and why. Think about the context, who they're talking about, what's going on in their business, et cetera. What are the two or three main points the executive was trying to make? Goals and objectives going forward. And then this is the most uh, uh, interesting is what are the analysts saying? What are they pushing back on? Trying to understand that. Uh, great question. Is data assets? Interesting enough. Yeah, I've got clients, for example, I've got a, a mine, uh, uh, oil and gas company. They captured a lot of uh, seismic data for drilling of, of wells. And that absolutely is an asset. They sell the access to that information as they move forward. So da data could absolutely be an asset. That's how the tool works. You go through, listen to the call, you capture that information and answer those uh, four quick questions. Well, folks, we don't have enough time to go through the full call. There's an hour plus call, but I want to walk through doing that, the, uh, uh, listening to a few of the communications and have you kind of write in, uh, help me figure out which of the five drivers they're focused on. So what I've got here is, is uh, Greg Hayes, their CEO's chairman. Here's the quote from the call. What I want you to do is in the chat box, get, you, get your chat box open. Let's go ahead and put that in there. Which of the five drivers do you focus on? Here's the first part of his statement. He says, so a couple of months ago, we held our first investor day as Raytheon Technology. Remember, United Technologies and Raytheon came together. So their annual investor day just happened earlier this year. And that day we laid out our 2025 goals in delivering strong top line growth, margin expansion, and at least 10 billion in free cash flow by 2025. All while continue to invest in our business and return significant cash to our shareholders. So put in the chat box, what do you see him talking about? Which of the five drivers can you see communicated there? So we're seeing growth for sure, right? We're The moment it says growth, that's pretty easy. I can put growth as one of my lines. But also stuff like expansion, that's absolutely growth for sure. You talk about profitability. Well, margin, that's talking about profit margins, whether it be gross, operating, or net profit. For sure, that's going to be there. And they want to expand their, their free cash flow. So cash for sure. Cash flow is going to be there. You might say, well, invest in the business. That could be assets as well. Absolutely, Hampton. Investment can be assets for sure. Okay, you're starting to see how it works. Let's do the next one. We continue to be confident in the future because of our strong franchise. Now, when we talk franchises, it's their four segments of the business. What was Rockwell Collins is now Collins. You've got uh, Pratt & Whitney, which does a, a lot of aircraft engines. Uh, and then the Raytheon uh, units, they call them uh, franchises. We continue to be confident in the future because of our strong franchises, the resilient markets in which we operate, our innovative technologies, and relentless focus on operational excellence, cost reduction, uh, which will drive margin expansion, same term we had up there, as well as strong cash flow. What drivers do you see in there? Absolutely. You're getting a bit of what we saw before, right? We're seeing growth in there. We're looking at operational excellence. That's all about efficiency assets. You could play that out. You could even weave in a little people there, right? Who's going to do that operational excellence? It's people, et cetera. And one of the things as you go through this is I want to be clear. This is not an exact science, meaning if you and I were to read this exact same uh, paragraph, we may not get the exact same number of lines around cash, profit, asset, growth, and people. 
Our company will do about a thousand sessions, multiple industries globally, but invariably what we find is the top two or three will rise to the top. Everybody as a group will see, yeah, these are the top two or three they're talking about, which then leads into, okay, so why are they talking about that? Well, let's jump into, here's another example. Uh, Neil Mitchell, their CFO. I'm not gonna read it, you just put in the chat box. What are you seeing here? What is Mr. Mitchell talking about? Which drivers? Renee, you had intellectual property. I don't know if you're asking a question there, but intellectual property absolutely could be an aff asset. Now they're talking about how they use that to grow their business. You can see growth, et cetera. I don't know if that was a question or just a comment there. Yeah, we're seeing a lot about profit uh, as, as you look at uh, sales. You know, the moment I hear sales or revenue, I'm thinking profitability for sure. Uh, high end of our outlook, okay, growth up 10% organically. Now, that's absolutely good. So a lot of growth in there, a lot of profitability in there. Uh, as you look at kind of what they're talking, EPS is a profit measure. So definitely uh, you're, you're looking at uh, earnings per share or EPS as a profit measure. So a lot going on there. Here's Jennifer uh, Reed, uh, Vice President of Investor Relationship. Uh, investor relationship, investor relations, excuse me. What do you notice here? Jennifer's talking about. Well, assets, yeah, different, different segments of the business. Definitely you got some assets here. This is the different groups that they're looking at. You're talking about sales and growth there quite a bit. So you got some profitability and growth as well. You're starting to see a very similar theme between the three, three executives for sure. Well, not only do you have this type of communication, but you also have the analysts will ask questions. Here's uh, Ron Epstein, Senior Aerospace uh, Defense Analyst for Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. And you'll see growth in there. Uh, you're talking about the assets defense business. So what, basically he's asking, where do we see growth happening in the defense portion of your business? What's gonna happen there? So definitely some growth uh, focus there. In the end, you could we could spend the you know a whole hour listening to call and capture a lot of data. I don't have time to do that right now, but you kind of see how it works. It's not rocket science. It's something that I think every one of us uh, can do to quickly kind of capture that data. So in the end, I've done it for you. Here's what I found. Now you'll notice a couple of things. I kind of break them out: prepared remarks versus an, an, uh, analyst questions. Why do they do that? I start to see if there's congruency or where the analysts are starting to push back. For example, you'll look at um, kind of right here, growth definitely is a big focus of both groups. Versus you look here, we got a pretty high profit focus from the prepared remarks, not as high of a, a focus here. So either they're fairly comfortable and confident well it's communicated versus over here, you'll notice you got kind of a, a disparity a little bit between assets and a lot more questions around assets as you come from an analyst perspective. And the end, it's all it is is data points that helps me think about, so why might that be? Well, the, once you've done this analysis, it's now going to answer the question. You'll notice uh, the four questions, I've got them all filled out here. Let me break them down by each question. So here's my first question here. Which business drivers seem to get the most attention? And of course, uh, the first one we saw 93 on, on my tracking was growth. So why? I love that second part of that question. And make sure as you do that, you always ask the question why. So number one, because they're speaking to investors. Here's my little tip. Anytime an executive is speaking to investors, growth is gonna be a part of the conversation. Even if it's like Boeing who was struggling last year, they'll talk about we restructure, we're closing down some of our operations so that we're ready to grow. So they'll talk about, even if I've had a tough time, here's the things I'm doing and now you should start to see growth. So the fact that it's communicating to investors, you'll hear a lot about growth. Well, if it's internally to your business, it might be a lot more people focused as your executives are talking about uh, internal strategies and how we can work better, get greater execution, et cetera. So the fact that they're talking to investors, growth is gonna be part of that. But in addition to that, they had a great quarter, strong top line growth sales up 12% or almost 13%, 10% organic. Now you remember from the courses, uh, organic growth is existing assets growth versus a growth because of acquisition. Remember uh, the acquisition of United, United Technologies, uh, a portion it happened, happened, I think April 3rd. So you'd have a, just a portion of that last year versus this year, but definitely a good year. Earnings per share, free cash flow, exceeded expected expectation laid out in the course. So why are they talking about growth? Their key metrics outperform 
great growth year over year on those three key metrics that they've talked about. Not only that, it was so good that they're anticipating that they can increase their guidance uh, into the top line. Now, why would they focus on that? Investors love this kind of stuff, right? The idea that, hey, you said you thought you would get be in a range total um, sales of about 63, oops, 64 billion uh, um, uh, to 64.5. Now we're increasing that uh, about $500 million is where they ended up being. So it went from 64 billion to just over 64 billion. Increasing the earnings per share. This is where the, the, they had anticipated earlier this year, they're upping it. So that's all positive, right? Uh, and cash flow. they said it would be somewhere around about 4.5 billion. After two quarters into the year, they're saying, actually it's gonna be somewhere between 4.5 all the way up to 5 billion. So they're really seeing some improvement in their numbers. On top of that, huge growth in their backlog. Uh, they got 152 billion, 3% up from Q1. So just one quarter growth, nice improvement, growth across all their top line. So why are they focused on growth? Well, they're talking to investors. Investors want to see that. And their performance was a very strong quarter and a lot of upside in what they thought they would perform, et cetera. Now, of course, one of the things I love is their, the, uh, the presentations that they present. There's a lot of data here. So I often will just review the slide deck itself because there's some great information. Again, here's that growth discussion they talked about. Earnings per share, what they're seeing there, improvements, their cash flow. It's all summarized in a very simple way. I can look at a quick slide deck and see kind of where their focus is as a company. So that's available. Of course, here's all that improvement, their full year outlook, where they thought they were gonna be versus now they're, what they're saying they're gonna be. And every single one of those, you're seeing nice improvement across the board as a uh, as a company so i always do the top two you could stop and just say what was the top one growth and move on to the next but assets they were so close 89 i think versus 93 very close a lot of discussion about efficiency lean manufacturing approaches how it's reducing their uh, uh production times how that's helping them get to market quicker uh significant backlog 152 billion dollars of backlog what does backlog say to an investor that says i've got a lot of future opportunity and benefit uh, it looks like renee was asking backlog orders they haven't delivered absolutely uh that's absolutely what it is renee so as they go into these contracts the backlog represents future potential they've got signed contracts that they're going to uh, supply products or services, but it may be two years out before they'll deliver, et cetera. So that's their backlog. And 152 billion, you, you think about it, if they generate about 65 billion, they got about two years of runway on revenue gen based upon their, their backlog, which really speaks to future benefit of the company. Um, Hampton's asking a question, what changed? M&A or are they uh, still having slow growth? I don't uh, know the industry. Jeff, I'm... Uh, uh, as a global logistics supply partner, backlog is hot topic for RDX right now, especially at Collins. Absolutely. Uh, the question around growth, they're growing because of acquisition for sure. Uh, bringing the two companies together, uh, you're, you're getting that benefit. But uh, DOD, they're, they're huge. About 46% of their business comes from government. So you're getting all those contracts coming in and the, the budgets just came out aligned with growth. There's a lot of updating of our technology. Uh, that they're looking for these uh, big players. The Raytheons, the Lockheed Martin is also playing that uh, role uh, year over year. Uh, I don't know for sure if that answers your question, Hampton, there. Let me know if I can answer that in greater detail. Anyways, as you look at this, uh, boy, uh, a lot of benefits as they look at efficiencies in what they're doing, reduced turnaround time, repair of infrastructure development, additional productivity improvements across the network, application of lean principles, shop design, automation. We're hearing a lot about automation across all industries, significant investment in digital technology. That's huge. One of the things I think if you've been on these calls with me before, I, I read many of these per month and everybody's talking about two things. Uh, one is this digital transformation, technology transformation, automation, et cetera. Uh, the other is around kind of social responsibility. That's been huge as well. And definitely you hear that in Raytheon's kind of communication. Uh, so a lot talked about their key, key products, et cetera, uh, interest in, of course, commercial aircraft coming back will be a big win for them as well. Well, what were the two or three main points of the executive? I kind of summarized them to two points with some bullet points underneath. Number one, strong financial performance, raising guidance, uh, 
repurchased 60, $632 million of their shares, bought by shares. They have a goal. So they've already bought back a billion dollars of shares for the first half of the year. Their goal is to buy back $2 billion shares by year end. They're more than, uh, they're, they're on target to kind of hit that. One of the things is they do their acquisition. They talked about synergies. As you bring two companies together, can you get some cost synergies? They continue to improve that. Uh, they're saying an additional $200 million of cost synergies as they integrate the companies together, bringing that up to a $1.5 billion. So strong financial performance any way you look at it. Significant growth uh, uh, potential for the future was another key message. The backlog, what we talked about, that's huge. Commercial uh, aftermarket, momentum building, that that's huge. Commercial, uh, the, the domestic airlines, you're seeing a lot of that, but the uh, what they call wide body or international, we're still waiting for areas to open up. But as that starts to improve, obviously demand for their products or services will start to increase. Of course, growth in defense as they try to modernize uh, their defense products. And then of course, strong, uh, what they call book to bill. What that means is uh, for every dollar they build, they had a dollar 20 of new bookings of opportunities. Let's see if I got some question here. Typically defense industry takes three years to deliver high end products. There you go, Thomas, probably an expert there. Uh, commercial aftermarket is product. So you got the original manufactured products like engines or whatever they bring, but aftermarket is, is repaired uh, where they're taking uh, either enhancing, put new engines into uh, new airline air airplanes, et cetera. But the aftermarket products is everything after the initial providing that product or service, if that makes sense. Are they expecting a really strong cash flow in the midterm? Less need of upgrades, capital investment. If they spent all the money, uh, share buybacks. Uh, or is this routine? Kitty, in the end, uh, definitely they've got a lot of cash going back and investing and expanding their business for sure. But of course, investors want to get cash back to them uh, or rewards or benefits back to them. So obviously, given di increasing dividends is a positive. But the second is stock buyback. So it is t it's common. They do both. So they're taking that cash upgrades and expanding their business, but they're also making sure they have some to buy back shares. Uh, and what really, when they buy back shares, they're triggering to the market that their stock price is undervalued, which suggests it should uh, see some improvement in the coming months, which should reward or uh, coming years, which should reward or benefit shareholders. So Katie, the answer to your question is they do both. Um, anyways, great questions, by the way. Uh, highlights, uh, again, the slide deck's always a great place to kind of capture some of those. What are the goals and objectives moving forward? They had a slide on this, so here it is. I'll, I'll walk you through it on the slide. Continue to support employees and customers, suppliers, and communities. This is all around COVID-19 safety, reliability, uh, really trying to help uh, as many uh, companies are. Very socially responsible to try and uh, uh, Get, get over the, the challenges we're dealing with with this COVID-19, get back to a new normal. Invest in technology and product innovation and dr uh, to drive industry leadership. This kind of goes back to your question, Kitty. Absolutely, they're taking billions of dollars and putting it back to get more efficient in what they do. Manufacturing time instead of three years, trying to reduce that, as Thomas was talking about earlier. Be as efficient as they can. Ex execute integration and delivery synergies. How can we bring the groups together and get greater synergy? So a lot of internal lean manufacturing, uh, clarity around expectations and execution around that. Drive operational excellence and continue structural cost reduction. They have a big cost reduction goal that they're focused on and everybody's looking at. Where can we be more efficient? How can we reduce costs but get more out of our products or services? A big focus there. Discipline capital deployment and maintain strong balance sheet. All we're talking there is where are they going to spend their cash internally to grow their technologies, innovation, but also getting money back to investors. And the strong balance sheet refers to uh, paying down debt, strengthening their balance sheet. This is right here. I've looked at a lot of companies uh, and I would agree. They've got a very strong balance sheet. They've got high demand for the products or services, great runway of backlog. Uh, they're, they're, talk about being in a good position, right place, right time, as we start to see a recovery. And even though it's a, an adapted recovery, a new recovery, right? Technology, innovation, new products or services is definitely right up their field and uh, they're a key player in that. Some of the additional data around kind of goals and objectives, they actually gave information. What do they see is going to happen? Here's kind of what they thought it would be. Here's the performance they think that's going to happen. You'll notice everything's increasing as they look at kind of their profitability as a company, which is a positive for them. Well, what key questions? Some of the key questions that stood out to me from analysts. Questions around the backlog. For military sales, Patriot program. For, so a lot of where's that going? What's happening? How soon are you going to bring it to market, et cetera? Growth and defense business was a big part. 
uh, X contract settlement. So, you know, they've, they've had some uh, contracts and uh, that, that uh, they had some settlements around those and that's had an impact on their financial. What's happening with those? Where sales strong versus areas uh, look to improve. Uh, commercial aerospace is wide body traffic's where they see some real improvement. Domestic improving, looking for growth and in international. Uh, growth of the rest of 2020 is a big focus of the questions. Where do you see that coming? And then cost synergies and integration for mergers. What do they see happening by year end? Of course, the answers to all those was, hey, we're, we're, we're performing well and we'll hit all those marks, if not exceed all those marks. Well, folks, that, that is the tool. So by this point, what do I know? Well, I know some of their key metrics. Number one, they're very focused on top line revenue or sales. They're looking at trying to uh, um, increase their free cash flow. They're trying to expand their margins, get greater profitability. How are they going to do that? Well, they got significant backlog. Uh, they're, they've got high demand for their products. Uh, and they're starting to see upticks in some of those markets that had been low as far as recovery, uh, the, aer the aerospace in particular, uh, commercial aerospace in particular. Well, let's jump in the financial performance. The tool is called the Navigating the Financial. Very simply, it brings everything uh, that I've discussed so far. It brings the five drivers, any of the key metrics a company might look at, as well as the financial statements to one place. It allows you to do a quick analysis on this. Now, it's very simple. Uh, you don't have to know all the metrics. You don't have to have even looked at statements before to be able to complete this tool. Here's how it works. You come in, I want to know what their cash position is. I'm going to look for what they call cash and cash equivalent. The line item in the statement is the same thing, cash and cash equivalent. The genius of this tool, it tells you where to go to find it. If I want to access uh, cash for a company, I'm going to look at their balance sheet. Now, if there's some sort of calculation, you'll notice down here, for example, I do a calculation here. I can do a calculation. In some cases, I just put the number in. Now, if I want to look at that and then maybe compare it to maybe uh, Q1 of this year or maybe last year Q2, I can do a comparison. And I can quickly do an analysis and see how they're performing. Now, if you don't really remember what uh, equity ratio might be, well, you jump on a Google, look it up. What is that? What's a good ratio? How should I think about that, et cetera? And then you start to be able to see how they're, they're performing. Well, let's, let's do this together. Brooklyn, I'll come back to your question on Patriot program. It's a missile defense program. 18 countries have bought into that. Um, so it's a big thing. Uh, Switzerland was the most recent one who bought into that. Uh, so let's, let's do this together. So here's what I want to do. I want to get our cash and cash equivalent. And if you'll put in the chat box as we go through that. Now, I know you don't have the financial statement, so I'm going to give them to you. So if I'm going to cash and cash equivalent, what statement using my tool? Let me clear out my writing here. What statement do I go to to access cash and cash equivalent? Put in the chat box. I want to see if you're comfortable using the tool. There you go. So balance sheet. Now you don't have it in front of you, so I'm going to bring it up. Now, if you come to our class, we'll talk about if it's a public U.S. company, they're listed by most liquid at the top down to least liquid. Liquid meaning how quickly they become cash. So, of course, you're going to find your cash and cash equivalent because it already is cash right at the top. Put in the chat box, how much cash did uh, Raytheon Technologies have as of June 30th, 2021? Put in the chat box, would you? Want to see if you can capture that? We're looking for cash and cash equivalent. There you go. That's $8,051, right? No, there, Ken got it for us. $8 billion, $51 million. That's our first number. Now, I could then go look. If I go back to it, I can actually go back and see. I notice it went down. Now, I can come back and say, so why did it go down? I'll show you the cash flow statement helps you to get that. But that's how you look at it. So I got $8 billion of cash on hand available. Now, that doesn't represent any sort of lines of credit they may have available to them. That's just purely it either is cash or will convert to cash in 90 days. Let's do the next one together. The next one I want to get is the cash flow. Cash flow from operations is what I'm looking for. Now, this represents the difference between all the cash that came in uh, from their core business, minus all the cash that went out to run their core business. Now, what statement am I going to go to? Let's get comfortable there. What statement am I going to? Look at my tool there. There you go, Jackie. Excellent. Cash flow statement. So here it is. Here's my cash flow statement. Now, you'll notice you got ca cash flow from operations. You got investing activities. And you got financing activities. Now, of course, what we're looking for is the cash from operating activities. Now, the number I want to get is right here. Net cash flow provided by operating activities. Put in the chat box. How much cash did Raytheon generate in the first six months of the year for them? There you go. It's our 
$49 million. Absolutely. Now, of course, I could look at that and say, what do I want that to do? What do you think they want that to do year over year? The cash they generate from their core business. They want it to increase absolutely, and that's absolutely what they did, and they love to see that. So there you go. Brooklyn, love all the zeros. Looking good. Okay, so we got the easy plug and play. Let's get two more. We're going to go to our third statement. I got to get my revenue. It's all profitability. The statement I'm going to go to is the income statement, P&L. There you go. So let's go there. I want revenue and net income. Now, notice I say revenue, but, but they say sales. Don't get confused by terms. Now, this one, I'm doing the quarterly numbers. So let's get the, re the net sales for Raytheon for the quarter. Put in the chat box. At this point, I think we're pretty comfortable how to use it. <laughs> there you go. Eight, 15 billion, 880 million. I then want to get my net income attributable. So jump down here. I got to get my net income for the quarter. I want Q2 only. What's our number there? There you go. Okay, I can go back and, and I can plug those in and we'll do our first calculation. Here it is. So I've got 15 billion, 880 million. I then jump in, I've got my net income of 1 billion, 40 million. Now I'm ready to do the calculation. Really easy, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down. So I wanna get my net profit margin. I'm gonna take my net income, divide it by my total uh, revenue. Grab your calculator, let's do one calculation. We'll wrap this section up. What is the calculation? Do 1 billion, 40 million, just do 1040, divided by 15880. Then multiply it by 100, tell me what you get. Did I do the wrong number on my, I may have done the wrong number. Somebody's giving me a one through two. Oh, you, yes, I got the wrong number. You guys are right. It should be this uh, Hampton and Bill. You were right. It's actually 1032. I took a higher number before they took out their non-controlling interest. That being said, I guarantee the percent's the exact percent. It's going to be a 6.5% because we're only talking an $8 million difference. It's not going to give me enough to move it up. So $6.6 .6 billion, uh, excuse me, 6.6%. .6 what does that say? For every $100 Raytheon Technology brought into their company in, in sales or revenue, they generate $6.60. Now, if I want to improve that, what do I do? Increase my sales, reduce my costs. That's their margin expansion they talk about. Well, folks, that's how you use the tool. We don't have time to go through the whole thing. So I've completed it. I've completed it on Raytheon for the first two quarters, uh, 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 excuse me, for Q2 of 2021 versus Q2 of 2020. Now, if I look at that, I can see, well, cash has gone down. I may want to say, so why? But my cash flow is going up. Top line growth. I'm getting a 13% top line growth. I love to see that. I'm, I'm seeing a net income, huge growth. Last year, they had to do a big impairment. They wrote down their goodwill. It was about a 300, uh, excuse me, about $3.8 billion impairment they did last year. So that's why you're seeing such swing. Now, if I wanted more time, if I had more time, I could see, so why? What are the things I want to extrapolate? Got a strong kind of equity ratio. I can look at those numbers. Now, if I want to, I can do it on a quarterly basis. I can also do it on a year to date. So this is the first six months of the year. Do a similar analysis. What am I seeing in the numbers? Uh, why is it happening, et cetera? Now, not only can you compare quarter to quarter, year to date, year to date, but I can do it from a competitor perspective. So here's Lockheed Martin numbers. A couple of things, about the same size revenue, but uh, Lockheed gets a much better margin, 11% margin. So I'd want to say, so why? What is different about Lockheed? Lockheed Martin, 74% of their business is government business versus 46. Does that have an impact? Well, obviously, if we had more time, we could talk about why that is. But you would look at that and you could see, so why are they getting better margin? Interesting enough, they're getting better margin. But look at their equity position. Very low equity position. Why? What that says is... Uh, um, uh, for every hundred dollars they have invested in their assets, only twelve point five, uh, twelve dollars and fifty cents of that represents equity ownership in their business. So that's that's a relatively low equity position. You want to know why? Go look at that. Uh, in the end, you got top line growth numbers. Not only can you do it on a competitor, you can do it on any company. Anybody who was with us last month, we did AstraZeneca, and here's AstraZeneca's numbers. Uh, so any company you can look at. Well, folks, that's how you do the analysis phase. At this point, what do I know? I know their key metrics and measures. I know their strategy. I understand kind of how they're performing around the key metrics. Now it's all about doing something. Now, if you don't do, if you don't do anything, uh, uh, application is the key. 
at this point, what am I going to do with this? Now, one of the key factors we look at here at Acumen Learning is application. You got to get application. You'll notice this. This was a study that was done with our customers uh, where basically they looked at what's the return they get when they work with us? What benefits do they have? For those of those who have worked with us before, you've gone through one of our programs. Which of these benefits have you seen? Go and put the A, B, C, or D. Some of the benefits of applying, taking this material. One of the things we really focus on is how do you do something? What can I? How can I use this? Eighty-four percent of those that use our products or service improve their performance and their business and function. Eighty-one increase their collaboration greater internally from an execution. Seventy-seven percent improved upward communication. Seventy-seven percent improved employee engagement. 75% increased business focus and 84% improved teamwork. In the end, that's the goal is you got to be able to use this information and do something with it. Our goal at Acumen Learning is to help you and your teams understand your customers, understand your company, and help make better business decisions. To move from a functional expert to a business expert, we'd love to work with any one of you if that could be helpful to you. That's this application. That's what it's all about. How do we take this information and do something with it? The apply phase is where it's at. As you look at application, I love this quote, to know and not to do is not to know. You got to do something with it. So what am I, what am I going to do with this is kind of the question. So again, I filled out the tool. Uh, what am I going to do? First, some key insights. It asks you, what are some of the key insights you gain? Here's some of the things that stood out to me. I haven't looked at Raytheon in a long time. I used, we used to do some work with them years ago, but I hadn't looked at them in a long time. A couple things, the United Technology and Raytheon, both of them had been clients. I didn't know that they had come together until just recently, I, I, obviously, as I did my research here. Huge play in, in many industries. Significant differentiation of the company, significant success coming from out of the pandemic. <coughs> Excuse me, they were a strong performer during it, and coming out of it, they're even stronger. Significant growth opportunities with backlog, defense, commercial, et cetera. Their view of the next conflict, if you have time, this is kind of interesting. You know, they're talking about the next conflict being cyber attacks, space communication, satellite attacks. I mean, literally, it reminds me of uh, uh, Tony Stark. I mean, we're talking about uh, lasers, you know, how to protect satellites, et cetera. Very interesting as you think about next conflict for some of us who just recently, we've had a number of hacking and how it's impacted uh, different companies, et cetera. So they're talking about that. That was interesting to me, our key insight. And the strength of their partnership with DOD. They're a strong player along with Lockheed and many others as well. So what am I going to do with that? Well, based upon what are the three actions I'm going to take? Number one, I want to continue to compare their performance with peers, best in market performance. I want to go back. I didn't do a deep dive on Lockheed to see what's going on with Lockheed. Honeywell, we looked at last week for a sales uh, conversation. Honeywell plays a little bit in the aerospace as well. So I look at that comparison. Uh, as a training company, uh, mine's all about taking that information and helping companies understand their business, their industries, et cetera. So share this information, findings with my consultants, our clients, as well as uh, any new customers. What's going on in industries, how to think about it, helps us to con uh, continue to be kind of a thought leader. And then last, how can Acumen Learning uh, help Raytheon employees understand their business, make a good business decision, and execute on the company's strategy and financial performance? For us, we'd love to work with them. Partner up with them and continue trying to help drive their success as a business. Uh, yeah, there you go. Elon Musk is our Tony Stark today. Love that idea. The last part of this tool is vitally important. It's taking it and doing something with it in a conversation. If I've analyzed my own company, I'd sit down with my supervisor, share my key three items, what I'm going to do, and make sure I'm a They can execute around that. And then if it's a competitor benchmark company, how can we differentiate ourselves would be that conversation. Saying they lo lost me. Are you losing me? Okay. I apologize. Uh, uh, somebody may be having a challenge. It looks like we're good. Okay. So that's the apply phase. That's the tool, folks. A lot of communicated in 55 minutes or so. Let me just uh, uh, share. So you'll remember... When we talked about that prepare phase, the second step was this. The second step was to review your notes. The notes that I just put together here become the notes for the next quarter. If I was doing Raytheon next quarter, I'd have them available. I'd do a quick review. That becomes your resource. That's how you continue to build your business. That's why I say if you do it two to three quarters consecutive, you'll understand your company. You'll understand your customer or the company you want to invest with. So here's my question to you. Who are you going to analyze? As you think about, go and put in the chat box, are you gonna analyze a company you work for, sell to, compete against, partner with, invest in, interested, or next month, we're doing United Health, we're doing healthcare, a payer, 
major uh, insurance company. You may want to do it on that company. Who are you going to look at as you move forward? Looks like invest in my client, work for, sell to, work for. I love it. Well, in order to do that, I got to get you access to it. Here's our website. Go to acumenlearning.com forward slash webinar, and you get access to the workbook. As well, there's a place to register for our next earnings call. Again, we're doing United Health on the 29th. I'd encourage you, invite friends, come be a part of this. It's a great resource. In addition, there's a place there you can suggest who we would look at in the future. We take that information and we, we look at different industries every month and we could select from your list uh, a potential company we can look at. In addition to that, if this is, uh, uh, if you've been through our program, but it's been a while, you want a nice review. We have an incredible online self-paced program. If you go to that website, you get $100 off to, if you want a quick refresher. If you've never been through a program, you just want to learn for yourself, again, you get $100 off and it'll give you a nice foundation around the five drivers, as well as how to look at those three financial statements. Well, folks, it's, it's truly been a pleasure to spend some time with you. I hope you found this uh, to be helpful. Uh, our goal, again, my guarantee to you is as you use this information, you're going to build your credibility, you're going to build your career, and you'll build your company. Thank you much for your time, and have a great day. Well, folks, as we uh, wrap up the, the main part of our training, we're going to stay on for any questions. Colleagues from Acumen Learning Team, if there was a question I missed, we need to go back to. Will you help me on that? But uh, love to stay on. If there's any additional questions, we can try and answer. You just put them in the chat box. We're happy to answer any questions we can. Well, as I'm not seeing uh, questions, uh, let me just share. Uh, if you are interested in this stuff, a couple of things that we do that might be interesting for some. Obviously, that online self page is great. If you're an individual, you want to learn more about us, that's a great resource for you. And it'll really give you a strong foundation. Actually, you can get CPE credits. It's a real strong course from learning business and finance. And it's practical. It's not theoretical. It's all about how can I use this in my day to day activity, which I think is one of our differentiators for sure. We also do live instructor programs. We can walk through this, looking at your company, looking at your customers, your competitors, and a training program, a two-day training program that we do. We do virtual programs. In addition to that, we do what we call earnings called v where we get a chance to do what we're doing here, but we're actually looking at your company and we do a deep dive. What was really said? Today, I went through Raytheon from the perspective of how to use the tool to assess uh, a company. Well, when we do the earnings call, we actually do the assessment. We look at what do they say about cash? What do they say about profitability? How are the measures going up and down? What is their forecast moving forward? What are analysts looking at with the goal in mind for internally for Raytheon employees to say, what can we do to impact the bottom line? We also do that with customers. So if, you have, if you're a sales organization, we have companies ask us, we come in, we do that analysis with customers. We'll get hundreds of uh, sales reps on looking at some of their biggest customers. How do we analyze them? How do we know what they're doing? We walk them through how to do that. So those are all resources. If you want additional information, that same website, you can request in, uh, information. Our, our rock star sales group will reach out to you for sure. Okay, let's see. Uh, has there been a review earnings call uh, for gig economy business such as Uber? Uh, help me remember, people, as companies that we've... Uh, uh, I don't know that we've done kind of... A, that type of industry yet, but Uber's a great one to recommend. Happy to look at that. Um, backlog company, any metric on how long it takes to work off of backlog, like six months versus four years? Uh, Thomas, that's a great question. It depends on what it is. is I think, uh, I don't know if it's you, Thomas, or somebody else, but um, uh, some, some of the products earlier, we had somebody say can, in the defense, it could take three years for a product to get out the door. Uh, so it depends on what you're looking at. Uh, it's a it's a continuation. So what's interesting about a backlog, when you hear a company's backlog and it's growing, you always got to remember that every year it's also decreasing. So the fact that they're decreasing, what they did is they covered anything they delivered, but in addition, they outperformed, which allows the uh, increase. So a backlog of, say, a 3%, they may have taken it down a portion in addition, uh, uh, and they covered all that and then added 3% to their backlog. So if a backlog is growing, that suggests they're, they've got great demand for their products or services. I don't know if anybody else wants to weigh in on, I got a couple of my colleagues who do a lot in this industry. They may have some insights around backlog specifically with defense. I know their big projects do take multiple years for sure.
Oh, Brooklyn kind of reminded us. Yes, you can get access to previous. Uh, there's a number. All of our um, earnings call labs are been recorded. I think we started with Exxon Mobil. We've done uh, somebody was talking Elon Musk. The other, uh, we did Tesla. Uh, we've done uh, Google. We've done Walmart. We've done uh, Amazon. We've done a number of others. But there's there's plenty of the, different industries, different groups. Brent Park, they don't. No, oh, thanks, Steve. I don't know if I'd say that. No Uber. Uh, they did do Google. Looks like. Well, folks, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Let me see where we're at on. Folks, we'll stay on if there's any additional questions. If not, we're going to be shutting down our program. Thank you much for joining us. It's been great to have you. Please come back, invite your friends. If you have interest in this topic, please reach out to us. Uh, we, we'll help you out for sure. Thanks, Bill. Okay, folks, we're gonna go ahead and shut down the program. Thank you much for joining us. Uh, again, September 29th is the date for our next one. Go to our website if you wanna register for that. We'll be doing United Health, uh, great payer, largest payer uh, here in the United States for sure. Looking forward to that. Thank you very much and have a great day.